Do you plan to provide, like, I imagine it is, you know, really important, first off, to get people tested and to get to know the community, but what other, and even if you're not offering it yet, what other kinds of um, physical services are you hoping to connect, you know, with this program? Like, what, beyond, I think, because I think, all right, let me just back up here. I've been working in HIV prevention for many years, and one of the things that we recognize at Reach LA, um, it's an organization for youth downtown, and we service uh, all different uh, youth. And one of the things that we really recognize is that um, it's not just about teaching people how to have safer sex practices or to get you know, making sure they get into services, which is really important if they're HIV positive, and learning about the disease, but it's also having a vision of themselves, of wanting to protect themselves and love themselves and be, you know, in a place where they can see themselves as a happy and successful and loved person in the future. Mm -hmm. And so ha that's, I think that, I think the storytelling is one of the things that will help you know, share in a community, because building sort of family, I think, is really important. So um, for us, it was, uh, at the program, was providing places where people could be creative, or could be creative beings, or could be, you know, share in their own cultures that was really important into recognizing themselves and wanting to first love themselves, because if they don't, then the protection or the safer sex practices doesn't necessarily, it just sort of goes, comes and goes. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm wondering how you're thinking in terms of, you know, because you are basing this in, you know, trying to connect both social media, HIV prevention, and culture. What would be your ideal program if you could get the funding to do, you know what I mean? Like, where would you want to go with it? That's um, well, that's a big gamut of questions, but it yeah, also, yeah you know, will help with my vision on how I want to see the program. Um, fortunately now we do have funding from three different sources, um, f from different agencies that are requiring different, um, you know, different s scopes of work for the program. But how I see the program of going is that we're going to begin to do our group level interventions, which is our workshops, our support groups, and then we're doing community level interventions, which is the intervention community promise, and um, also will involve the community advocates as well. One thing that I see that we're missing is the individual level interventions, so one on one discussions and understandings and kind of per se the case management that's needed, particularly for HIV positive clients to make sure that they're adhering to their treatment and care. That has been really been a challenge. But so, you know, by providing all levels of, um, of interventions for our community, I think is really key and important. And so individual, group level, and community level, I think are all, um, you know, all encompassing in terms of the comprehensive services that we might, may or are providing in terms of HIV prevention. Um, in terms of self-identity, that is one key that we're really working on. And I think it's a really important key, particularly for our community um, and particularly for our True Spirit transgender community. And so we've developed um, um, a curriculum called Strengthening the Circle that utilizes the Native American concept of the medicine wheel. Um, so it's a workshop that's designed um, as a four-part workshop, and each workshop is a part of the medicine wheel concept. So the first workshop, we present about the emotional understanding of individuals. We talk about historical trauma, we talk about native identity, we talk about LGBT identity. And, um, and it gets very heavy, and so we do that in the first workshop. We follow that workshop up, uh, workshop up with the physical part of the medicine wheel, which where we introduce HIV, we introduce STIs, um, and how to begin to look at these diseases and how it impacts the individual physically. The next workshop, the third workshop, is based upon the mental part of the mental, um, the mental part of the medicine wheel. And in that workshop, we begin to introduce harm reduction strategies, um, you know, the understanding of making healthy and better decisions for the individuals and utilizing that cultural context that we as human beings have that ability to think and make those decisions. And then the final workshop that we do, the fourth workshop, is based upon the spiritual aspect of the medicine wheel, which I think is really key for our community. And so when I say spiritual, I mean everything that affects us, everything that we feel um, that will help us to live a good and balanced life. And so we introduce um, issues such as um, the stages of change in that particular workshop, leaving the, leaving the participant an opportunity to begin to utilize all aspects of 
the concept of the medicine wheel to live a balanced and healthier, more understanding life. And we've really found that to be really effective for our community. And so we've developed this curriculum about two years ago, and it's really been effective for our community because our community understands the concept of the medicine wheel and the different components, but yet we provide little tidbits of understanding for behavior change, HIV prevention, and self-identity. Um, and we're hoping to get more funding for that curriculum to be able to provide to other communities in the country because like I said before, there are no evidence-based interventions that are geared for the native community. So I think we've really kind of set a precedence by developing these workshops to be able to do that. But self-identity is really key. If a, you know, if, an indiv if a native person doesn't understand who they are and where they come from, their life choices and their level of risk will be much higher than if they know who they are as a native person and their rooted understanding and their culture and traditions. And more specifically for two-spirit transgendered individuals, that understanding of acceptance and honor that was a part of our traditions prior to colonization is really key. So when we begin to talk about historical trauma, I introduce those concepts that we as two-spirit people were a part of our communities. You know, we were well accepted in our communities. There were actually words and ceremonies that were used to describe us, you know, and that gives evidence, evidence to who we are, and we need to be able to reclaim that identity as well. So it's kind of a holistic understanding, but it's just that structural way of, you know, being able to um, provide those services in a way, and also because of funding as well. So, um, you know, we're very fortunate enough to be able to provide these services for our clients. Oh, that's, that really answers, that sounds great, the curriculum that you're developing. Um, are you, do you have an age group that you're working with specifically, or like do you have different workshops for like younger people, or are you finding more younger people involved in your programs, or is it all age ranges, intergenerational? Um, it's been all age ranges. Um, I think our medium age for our participants has been about 30 to 35. Um, and we all really feel that there's a need to begin to do more work with our youth. Um, and so we're beginning to outreach. We haven't, um, um, we haven't implemented that curriculum with our youth. I think the youngest person who's been a part of the curriculum was probably 22 years old. But I think it'd be really interesting to be able to provide that workshop to our youth and see how they can relate to it and understand it. Um, the interesting thing about the curriculum, the strength and the circle the curriculum that we developed based on the medicine wheel is that it's adaptable for different populations. And when we give a concept, we give a structure, but you can adapt it to an urban Indian population, you can make it more specific to a certain tribe, and then also you can make it and gear it towards and adapt it to specific populations. So we've been able to run the curriculum with heterosexual men, injection drug users, native women, native transgender and two-spirit individuals. Um, and the youth is another component I think we could you know, be able to look at and see how that's adaptable to be able to present to the youth and how accepting is that for them to be able to um, you know, make those decisions and how that might impact their understanding. So that's another area we could look at being able to provide those. Yes, that so you're too. hoping to get funding to sort of roll it out on a national level then? <laughs> Yes, we are. We just um, got funding through the Office of Minority Health to actually do an evaluation to this curriculum. Um, and that was finished earlier this year. So now we have tools to be able to evaluate. We have a pre-test, post-test risk assessment, which we're very happy to have. Um, so now we can actually evaluate, is this curriculum useful? Uh, is it impacting our people? Um, we've heard from people that have gone through the curriculum how much it's impacted their lives, how they've been able to talk to their other community members, uh, family members as well. So we have that qualitative information, but now we really need that quantitative information to look for additional funding. Um, so I'm advocating um, to different funding sources to be able to do a train the trainer for, um, for this curriculum so then we can um, pilot it in different communities. Um, I presented on this curriculum at numerous national conferences and have had a really good response from other native communities and they've been wanting, to, wanting, them, wanting me to send it to them so they can do it within their communities because they think it's a great concept, but we didn't have that evaluation component that we have now and so we're hoping to be able to do that for them. Is the, oh, sorry. Oh. Okay. No, I think that was a great discussion that we had just up to that end, so, yeah.